Okay, welcome back for day four of JavaScript testing for beginners. Today we're going to talk about time travel. We're going to use some fake timers. So if you remember yesterday we had quite a slow test. We're going to learn how we're going to speed that up by using what's called a fake timer. We're going to use a great test double library. Um, I talked about test doubles in the very first video I recorded. Um, we're going to use Synon, which is a great um, test double library. And we're going to learn a bit about mockers before each and after each as well, because we're going to need to th do things before tests and after tests. Then we're going to use the fake timer again to work with some dates. We want to tell if a date is in the future. And then we're going to fake the current time to help us. So on with today's test. If you create a new file called day4.js and day4.test.js, um, we're going to copy some code that we did yesterday. So I've copied the code for the set timeout. We don't need the promise. We're not going to be testing promises today. So if you copy the code to set the timeout and it, it does a callback with hello after one second. I'm exporting this slightly differently today because we're going to export a couple of functions that we're both going to test. So obviously we then we need to import it slightly differently. I'm using ES6 uh, modules here and importing uh, the timeout function. And again, we're just going to check that it should return the expected value from the callback. Right, so if we run the test, we'll see what happens. Do we require bubble register again? And again, we're only going to test the day four test today. So as you recall, it takes a second for this code to run. So if each unit test takes a second to run and we've got hundreds or maybe even thousands of unit tests, the test suite as a whole is going to take quite a long time to run. With unit tests, as I said in the first video, we need unit tests to run really quickly so we can try and isolate the dependencies. So in this case, our dependency is set timeout. It is waiting for a second until the test runs. So what we're going to do is we're going to install Synon, and that's going to give us something called a fake timer. So let's install Synon now. npm install minus minus save dev. Synon. It might be called Synon. Synon, Synon. Okay, so that's now installed. Right, so let's hit import it into our tests. Import synon from synon, if I can spell. There we go. So what we can do now is use a fake timer. So if we create a clock using synon's fake timers, yeah, use fake timers, there we go. So if we run the test now, well, the test times out. Now the reason the test is timing out is because we fake the timer here. So set timeout is now a fake set timeout, but it never actually gets incremented. So the time never ticks. So the fake timer has something called tick. So if we tick that on and we tell it how many seconds we want it to tick. So obviously what we want to do is we want it to run a thousand milliseconds a second. So if we do this and then run the test now, instantly passes 119 milliseconds much faster and our test has instantly called the callback so let's just check that it's worked correctly we'll just uh, change the expectation obviously that's wrong it, it does return hello so we we'll change that back check great stuff so then we faked set timeout and the timer we can now run all of our tests really quickly so this is really really useful for anything which involves time okay so let's write another function now. We're going to call it a date describer. Uh, date describer. And we're going to pass in another date, and it's going to tell us whether this date is in the future, in the past, or whether it's right now this year. So it's going to check the year for us. So we'll create another test in here. So it should correctly describe a future year. Okay, great. So what do we need it to do? We need to bring out date describer. So we'll pull that from our module and we call it and we need to pass in another year. So what we'll do is we do new date and we set up a date. So we the date is currently 2017, so obviously 2018. 1st of January 2018. So we want that to return a string. We'll call that description. So we do const description equals. And then we expect description to equal, um, what should we get to say, in the future. 
So 2018 is a year in the future. Let's run this test now. Okay, obviously it doesn't, it's undefined. Okay, so let's write some code. So let's think what we need to do. We need to get the current time now. And that's the date and time now. And then we're passing in the other year. So we need another year. Let's find what the other year is. So we'll do the date has something called get full year. So that'll return as like 2017, 2018. And what's the year now? So we'll call that current year. Let's do uh, date now dot get full year. Okay, great. So then what we can say is we can do a, a, a difference of the year. So we do year difference equals the other year minus the current year. Okay, so if we think about the logic now, if the year difference is greater than zero, that means we're a year in the future. If the year difference is less than zero, that means we're, we're one or more years in the past. Um, and if the year difference is zero, that means it's the current year. Okay, so our first test says should correctly describe a future year. Okay, great. So we'll do if year difference is greater than zero. And then we need to return what we said in the future. Okay, so that's great. Let's run this test now. And other is not defined. We've called it other date. Let's name that correctly. Let's try that again. Okay, that great, that's worked, but there's something funny going on now. So let's just do a console.log of date now dot get time. So this will get us the epoch time. We'll have a look in our test what it thinks it is. So at the moment it thinks it's a thousand. Now there's a familiar value there, a thousand. What we've done is we've stubbed all of the timers, but we've not restored them. So at the moment, it thinks it's one second past epoch time, which is 1970, the 1st of January, 1970. Um, so that's wrong. So obviously all of our tests are messed up at the moment. One thing we can use is Mocha has before each, use before each to set something up before each test and, and it has something called after each. And that restores something after each test. So what we'll do is we'll create our clock and we'll move this so that we set it up before each test. So before each runs before each test. This is in Mocha and after each runs after each test. Right, so what we need to do is we need to restore the clock. And to tidy this all up, we'll put this all in a, another describe block. So let's do Mocha describe and this is our timeout tests. Let's move everything inside that. There we go, that test. Great stuff. So we've got everything we need for our timeout test is there. Let's run our test again. Okay, great. So as you can see, the date now at get time that we've logged is actually right. That's, that's today's uh, date and time. So let's just wrap these just to make things easier and um, clearer. We're going to wrap that in a describe block as well. So this is our, what do we call it? Date describer tests. Okay. So we'll put those in there. So at the moment we've done the future year. So let's do another test for the uh, year in the past. So we'll do it um, should correctly describe a past year. And again, we're going to test, we're going to do get our description. Um, date describer, I'm going to do a new date. I'm going to do 2016, which was last year. As I say, it's 2017. So expect description to equal in the past. Great stuff. So let's change the code now. We can do an else, uh, oops, else if uh, year difference is less than zero. We can return in the past. Okay, let's try that test. Great stuff, that works. Okay, we take that out just to check it works. Yep, doesn't return anything. Now it's in the past. We can take that console log out. So the last thing we wanted to do is we wanted to check 
and I'll just copy this task really quickly. And it should describe a this should describe current year. Oops. So obviously if we want this to be 2017 and say this year. Okay, so if we run that, it's gonna fail. So last thing we want to do is an else statement there. So we're saying if the year difference is greater than zero, it's the future. If the year difference is less than zero, it's in the past. Otherwise, it's this year because the difference is zero. So it's the current year. This should work. Okay, so that all looks great. We've written some tests involving dates. But there's a big problem here, a really big problem. So I'm going to run these on my continuous integration server, something like that. And it's great. It's 2017. We're doing a new date there, and that date is 2017. But these tests all reference 2018, 2016, 2017. What happens when these tests get run next year? They're gonna fail. So the thing we need to do now is we need to stub the date, and we're using the fake timers again, and we can stub it to a specific date. So what we're gonna do is we're going to stub our date using fake timers. So let's use mockers before each and after each so we're going to create a clock and that's going to use synons use fake timers again obviously we're going to do after each i'm going to restore it and obviously we need to create it there we go clock okay great so what we can do though is to correctly define the year that we want we can say const current year is 2017 and then let's create a new date so we do a new date which is the current year and we'll do that as the first of january in the current year and then what we can do is we can pass that into use fake timer so we pass that through now what we've said is that date when we do a new date it starts at this new date that we've defined so this is great for our any tests that are going to run across multiple environments it won't just work on your machine, it'll work on the, the Jenkins box if you're using continuous integration on Jenkins or Travis or something like that. And then what we can do is we can correctly define all of our dates based upon the date that we've set up. So let's run our tests again. Great, they all work. Okay, but what happens if it's 2018, so next year? Obviously, this one's gonna say, should say, uh, this year. This one, 2016, should still work. That'll be in the past. Uh, but this one won't say this year, that'll be in the past also, let's see. So our tests are all failing now, you see. So should correctly describe a future year, it should say in the future, but it doesn't, it says this year because it's 2018. We, what we can do is we can set this, and this is where you should al always think about refactoring your tests so they're really clear. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this outside here, I'm gonna do current year is 2018. And then what I'll do is for each of these, I'm gonna reference the current year, so we want it to be future, we want to say current year. Whoops. And um, we can't see this. Let me just bring this onto the screen. Sorry about that. We do current year. Uh, and then we'll add one to it. So that's always the current year plus one. So whatever we've set the current year to, this test should always pass. Likewise, we want something to be in the past. So we're going to do, rather than doing 2016, we say current year minus one. And finally, for our last, last test, Again, we just want this to be current year. So run those tests. They should all pass. Great stuff. Let's change the year. And uh, we're now going to be in 1999. Whoops. Or 199. 1999. Again, all the tests pass. So it's great. So this doesn't really matter now. We'll change it back to 2017, which is obviously the current year. It doesn't really matter when that's set to now. All of our tests work based upon our current year that we're defining. So this means they can run in the future. They're all future-proof. You've written really solid tests. Good work. Okay, then tomorrow, we're going to look at writing some actual production-style code. We're going to look at using the GitHub API to get the number of stars and number of watches on some repositories. We're going to use Synon again with some test doubles. Um, and we're going to stub and spy on functions and HTTP requests, things like that. Right, I'll see you tomorrow for more JavaScript testing for beginners.